So I was recently sent this little uh, frequency counter module by a uh, subscriber of the channel and you can pick these up off eBay for around £8, sometimes even less if you uh, have a look around. And uh, he wanted me to test it because he couldn't get it to work at 2.4 gigahertz. Now this apparently will work up to 2.4 gigahertz according to the uh, description on eBay. But uh, he uh, couldn't get it to uh, produce or display a proper signal at 2.4 gigahertz. So I thought we'd put it through its paces and uh, try some of the lower frequencies first and work our way up. Now, what I've done, I've modified this slightly. Um, I've put an SMA connector on the end here. Uh, originally, it comes with uh, this, which is uh, two wires and a connector the same as the uh, power connector on this side and uh, you feed your signal in using these two wires but I've removed that and put an SMA connector on there just for convenience you could uh, probably put a uh, BNC connector on there as well although BNC connectors aren't rated for microwave frequencies normally but you can get BNC connectors that are um, this is just a frequency counter so you're not measuring power so any kind of uh, loss shouldn't make that much of a difference anyway but um, yeah let's take it over to the uh, testing bench and uh, put it through its paces, feed some signals in and see how well it performs. So here we are on the test bench then, about to uh, put this little module through its uh, paces. Um, I have downloaded the uh, manual and I'll put a link in the description to this because uh, if you want to get the best out of this module you really need uh, this manual. I've been uh, messing around with some of the settings on this prior to turning the camera on and without the manual you really are uh, you know shooting quite blind and you need to uh, enter some of the values into the uh, IF value to uh, get it to work properly at the higher frequencies but uh, I've got it set up now uh, pretty middle of the range so we should be able to scan from uh, you know say uh, 200 megahertz which uh, is what I've got the uh, uh, signal generator set onto now uh, up to uh, you know the hopefully the 2.4 gigahertz I haven't tried that yet but uh, let's uh, put it through its paces and see how well it performs next to uh, my frequency counter now you'll probably see on my frequency counter it's just a little bit lower two digits lower than the uh, output frequency on the signal generator and that's because the uh, signal generator that I'm using I'm using it on CW mode it really needs a good 45 minutes to warm up this thing to uh, you know get it to uh, a precise frequency output normally it doesn't really matter when I'm using it for testing antennas and things like that but uh, you know in 45 minutes time it will uh, come up to temperature and be uh, bang on then on the frequency counter although the uh, sweep generator hasn't been uh, calibrated in two years this was calibrated uh, I think about three months after I've got it and I've probably had it just over a year now so I've powered the little module on then and you can see there it's displaying you know quite accurately uh, 200 megahertz it is out by a couple of uh, you know digits there but uh, you know for eight pounds which uh, I've had a little look on eBay you can get these for uh, that's pretty good you know uh, if you were to put this in an enclosure and uh, use it at the uh, lower frequencies that's uh, pretty acceptable for uh, you know eight pounds and free shipping so you can see the first three digits on my uh, frequency counter there is 198 and uh, that's probably representative of what the uh, signal generator is outputting at the moment as I said it needs to warm up but you can see here 207 I mean I wouldn't grumble at that at all so let's go up a little bit then let's go up to uh, 400 megahertz and see what we get and again you know pretty acceptable 407 and uh, mine is just under by uh, two digits there, 398, and uh, you know, pretty acceptable and pretty quick as well how it uh, updated itself. So let's put in 500 megahertz. And again, pretty quick down here, 5505 and uh, 498 on the uh, HP frequency counter there, so again, you know pretty acceptable really 
So let's do a jump now then. Let's go up to uh, 1 gigahertz and see how well it uh, performs with 1 gigahertz. And you can see now what I was meaning by this really needs to warm up. You can see the frequency counter now is showing much closer to uh, 500 megahertz. But uh, we'll do a jump up to 1 gigahertz. So my frequency counter is showing uh, 998 but you can see the little module has gone a little bit uh, nuts there and uh, again if I didn't read the manual I wouldn't realise what's happening here and the power output from the uh, signal generator here is too low so I need to increase the power output and then it stabilises a little bit more but you can see it's still you know 940 it's uh, flashing around there showing uh, much closer to 1 gigahertz but let me increase the power a little bit more and there you can see it's stabilized a lot better and uh, it needs that extra power uh, to show a readout at the uh, higher frequencies and without the manual you uh, probably wouldn't know that but uh, you know it's uh, dropped off a little bit in performance it's showing 986 there so a little bit under but again you know for uh, eight pounds uh, what tends to happen is the higher frequencies uh, uh, measuring equipment really jumps up in price in fact it quadruples in price because uh, it gets more and more expensive uh, with the higher frequencies because they're harder to uh, measure but uh, you know 986 it's uh, certainly pretty close I mean uh, you know I wouldn't grumble at that at all not quite up there you know it's a few digits off 1 gigahertz but uh, you know 986 there for uh, 8 pounds can't really grumble at that in fact let's just add a little bit more power and see if we get a much better reading let's go up to 10 dB and there you go 10 db that's a lot better it's reading a lot closer to that one gigahertz so this does need a higher power input of the signal to uh, read the higher frequencies so let's do uh, 1.5 gigahertz then see how well it copes with that and again pretty responsive and uh, pretty accurate measurement there so we're getting 1506 on the, the uh, little frequency counter here and 1497 on my HP one. Now it's warming up, it's getting a little bit more accurate as we go along, but uh, you know, you can't really grumble at that. So let's do a jump to uh, 1.8 gigahertz. And again, it's starting to fluctuate a little bit there, but it's... Uh, almost bang on the money it's uh, fluctuating between 180 and uh, you know you can't really grumble so I'm just seeing if it stabilizes a little bit so 179 which is identical to my HP frequency counter there it's just fluctuating back and forth but again I'm pretty happy with that so let's go up to 2 gigahertz and see how well it performs at 2 gigahertz So 199 on uh, my HP uh, counter there and 196 on this uh, little uh, 8 pound module here. Again, it, uh, you can't grumble at that. Let me uh, just up the power a little bit and see if that helps it out. So it's stabilised in the first uh, four digits a little bit more, but uh, yeah, 198 not bad for 2 gigahertz so let's take it to uh, the 2.4 gigahertz then the uh, subscriber who sent me this told me he couldn't get a signal at uh, 2.4 gigahertz so let's center on 2.4 and it's gone a little bit uh, balmy again you can see that my frequency counter is showing uh, 2.39 uh, gigahertz there but this one's gone a little bit mad so let me up the power again and see if that uh, sorts it out
and indeed it has I've got it on uh, 15 dBm at the minute and uh, 2.24 gigahertz there so maybe a little bit more power now I'm unleveled on the uh, signal generator but you can see it really needs that power to do a measurement further up the uh, frequencies so what I'm going to do is hook this up directly to a little uh, 2.4 gigahertz frequency generator module that I've got because I've now uh, gone over what uh, my signal generator the power output is capable of but you can see it's uh, certainly working up there two three five seven it's uh, fluctuating between you can see on my frequency counter two three nine so you know it's certainly up there at 2.4 gigahertz but I think it just needs that little extra boost in power to be able to get that reading and uh, that's something to note you know if you want to use this at the high frequencies then you need uh, quite a strong signal to input into this to get a decent reading out of it can handle low power down in the uh, megahertz range you know 0 dBm to 3 dBm no problem at all but you do need that higher uh, power setting at the higher frequencies so this is the setup then I've got a signal generator here a little amplifier feeding into the uh, frequency counter basically we've got 250 milliwatts of uh, power going into the frequency counter and I'm still not getting a accurate measurement at uh, 2.4 gigahertz and uh, I think as we saw uh, set up previously I think the maximum for this is uh, 2.3 gigahertz I don't think we're going to get any kind of reading at 2.4 it seemed to be fine up to 2.3 but then uh, just bottomed out at uh, 2.4 so yes adding the extra power at the higher frequencies does help uh, you know get you a reading which is another question uh, somebody asked me uh, or the subscriber who sent this asked me uh, you know could he use this with an antenna and over the air measurements and I think you could at the lower frequencies quite possibly but at the higher frequencies you need some kind of amplification uh, for it to uh, show a reading because uh, you do need quite a lot of power going into this at the uh, higher frequencies so as a conclusion then not a uh, bad little module I mean for eight pounds uh, you can feed some signals in here and uh, you know see the uh, frequency readout I couldn't get it to do the uh, 2.4 frequency as you saw on the uh, bench there but unless I'm doing something wrong I don't know maybe there's some more settings you have to do with this I've tried it on the auto uh, you know on the higher frequency setting and uh, just couldn't get it to work I, uh, I've spent some time looking through the manual as well uh, I'll put a link to uh, in the description to the manual because as I said you really need this manual to get this to work I mean uh, you know you go through the menu by clicking these tactile switches here but unless you've got the manual you don't really know what you're uh, clicking on but uh, as a module for eight pounds I mean you get a lot here for your eight pounds and uh, it could probably benefit as well by uh, putting in some kind of enclosure because if you noticed in the test I didn't really touch it when we were measuring because um, touching this it probably affects the ground plane somewhat and uh, it would make uh, the display go all funny so probably if you put this in some kind of uh, plastic enclosure it would perform a lot better for you but uh, it is disappointing that I couldn't get it to go up to 2.4 as uh, the subscriber who sent this in he really wanted it to uh, test it to 2.4 for his uh, transmitters but uh, couldn't get it to work but uh, for any frequency below 2.4 up to 2.3 gigahertz it really does seem to work well for the money and for anybody who wants to hack around and uh, play around with this it is a, a pick based system and uh, the uh, headers for the programming uh, are still in place on here so you could probably get in there and play around and uh, you know see what uh, else you could do with this um, this heatsink here doesn't get all that warm but there again I never put any more than 8 volts into it uh, so that's probably why it never got too warm but uh, if you're going to put this in an enclosure with uh, its own power supply I put a uh, little heat sink on there just to make doubly sure you dissipate that heat a little bit more but uh, yeah I mean for the money you can't go wrong but this one didn't seem to do 2.4 gigahertz
So if you did enjoy the video, please uh, give it a uh, thumbs up. If you've got one of these and you've managed to get it working at 2.4 GHz, let us know. Especially uh, if you saw in the video I was doing something wrong. Um, because, uh, you know, if I can get it to work at 2.4, I could also use it in some experiments here in the lab as well. But uh, if you did enjoy it, as I say, please give it a thumbs up and hopefully you'll uh, join me on the next one.